Good Monday morning to you and welcome to Home with the Parents. Today on our devotion, I'm going to be discussing with you about the Sabbath and keeping it holy, what we can do and what we can't do. So come along with me as we discuss the Sabbath. Today we're going to talk about the Sabbath. So let's start with the basics. What is the Sabbath? The Sabbath is the seventh day of a work week that God declared holy. Now to be holy means that you're to be set apart, that it's different, that it is to be honored. God's plan and what he actually did in the beginning and when he was doing his creation he worked for six days, which it talks about in Genesis. And on the seventh day, he rested. So since we are to be in the images of Christ and to do the things of the Bible, we are to rest on the seventh day as well and work for six. To think about what the Sabbath is, is it's so easy in human nature to think that God wants us to never have any fun. He never means for us to be happy. And he always means for us to just be hammered with a bunch of rules. Not true. The Sabbath is a gift to us. And actually, even though we are being obedient to God when we honor the Sabbath and keep it holy, it is actually also very important to us as it keeps us healthy. It keeps us um, able to function. That as it is a gift to us, it is just that. It is a benefit for us and it is also honoring God. The Sabbath is mentioned actually before it is listed in the Ten Commandments in Exodus 16. So, when it's talking about the Sabbath, it is saying that for six days you shall labor and do all of your work. All of your work. So that is covering anything that you would do that applies to what you would need to do six days a week with your job, your vacation, or even your calling. So if you would send emails with your job, then on your Sabbath, you don't send emails about your job and communication and doing things of your work um, that pertain to your job because that is considered work and that is what you would do during your six days. So you don't do that on your seventh. Um, making phone calls. Um, you turn your phone off on your Sabbath day um, because Again, that is what you would do during the six days, and on the seventh day, it is different. The seventh day is holy, and it is set apart, so you do different. Also, a reminder of a good saying that is biblical principle, you have to do different to get different. So, see, that's thinking beyond that superficial layer of what we need out of life and what God wants to give us in life. So, also, um, it carries the same weight as adultery, lying, murder. Those are all in the Ten Commandments. So, the Sabbath day to keep it holy is in the Ten Commandments along with what's listed such as adultery, lying, and murder. That says that there is a huge importance on keeping the Sabbath day holy. If we look at Exodus 16, 23 through 30, so we're going to start at 23, and it says, And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord hath said. So the Lord has said it. The Lord has spoke. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath. So on the seventh day, he said, It is rest. It is holy. It is the Sabbath. 
It is the Sabbath unto the Lord. Bake that which ye will bake today, and seeth that ye will seeth, and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning. So right here is where he is talking about my position as a wife and mother and a helpmate. God provided manna for the Israelites when he rescued them from Egypt, from Pharaoh. God was the cloud by day and the fire by night, which means he provided by day and he provided at night. Whatever they needed, everything they needed. So God rained manna for them to have food. And God did command that what they were to do, there was a process in order for them to get to the land of milk and honey. In this journey, they were learning to be obedient to God. They were having to change. They were having to do different from what they had done before. God was teaching them something new. They were growing their faith. They were having to listen to a leader, which was Moses, which God was using Moses as the tool to um, give to the Israelites and to provide for them. So God rained manna and he had a commandment that he was going to rain enough on Saturday that they were to go and collect the manna and store it up and they would have enough for Saturday and that they were to have on Sunday what was left over. So you didn't bake, you didn't go and gather up. There was not going to be any manna on Sunday if they went to gather up because they were told to do it on Saturday. So there are specifics there where God wants us to follow the specifics. You have to follow the specifics to get what God has said he will give you. So they had to gather up on Saturday, and then what was left over from what they used Saturday is what they ate on Sunday. So it says, verse 24, And they laid it up till the morning, as Moses bade, and it did not stink, neither was there any worms therein. So see, it's God's protection and provision right there that when you do what he says, he provides. He does exactly what he says. You get good out of it. So any other time, the food, the manna would have basically went bad. It would have went rotten. It would have stank. And it would have had worms growing in it. But on Saturday, which God told them to gather today for Sunday. God prevented it from going bad. And Moses said, Eat that today, for today is a Sabbath unto the Lord. Today you shall not find it in the field. In other words, on the Sabbath day, you don't go gather it. You don't go and prepare your food. You did that yesterday. Six days you shall gather it, but on the seventh, which is the Sabbath, in it there shall be none. You don't go gather it. He's just repeating himself. Um, and normally, in most cases, if it is being repeated, it has high importance. And it came to pass that there went out some of the people on the seventh day for to gather, and they found none. So see, they were disobeying God, and God does not provide when you disobey. Disobedience does not bring the blessing. Obedience does. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long refuse ye to keep my commandments and my laws? So when do you want to start observing the Sabbath? When do you want to start receiving the benefits that God has for you with the Sabbath? 